So this is wild and woolly, but it's in the garden. And I think I've done this bed. This is now the third year. Yeah, I think it's the third year, maybe the fourth year that this patch has been developing. And my plantation where Carl the Oak lives, I am bringing down different varieties of daisies. There's the traditional oxide daisies, and then there's the uh, uh, marguerites, and then there's some primroses that I've grown in pots, so they're easy to do. And we have two different kinds here. There's this kind of primrose, and then this primrose, and more primrose. And I'm planting them in regular soil. This is regular soil from here in the garden. So not potting soil. So I'm ready to go and do more planting in the plantation where Carl is. And also the oak tree that I planted on New Year's Day called the Tree of Hope. It's another oak tree that I grew from a seed. So we'll plant some of this stuff around the Tree of Hope so that um, more pollinator friendly things because see moths love this and moths only come out at night so i want this to reseed there and get lots of that there and these are the oxide daisies so it's always giving a helping hand to nature is my aim isn't that right yeah you can see and because inspecting where i dug up some of the oxide daisies is there worms in there are there bugs and worms and grubs? It's very healthy. Okay, off to plant some oxide daisies, marguerites, and evening primrose. Okay, now this is my dry plantation that's here in this outer yard. You can see the quads loaded up with plants to go and plant in the plantation. I will be. Um, planting out there. Here is, um, oh, I'm being stupid. I can't remember what this is called. Anyway, this will be going out. I'll be getting some of this later. Um, also waiting for the seeds to mature. This is willow herb. This is such a beautiful plant. Anyway, pollinators love that. Pollinators, all kinds of pollinators love this. Um, then I will also be the foxgloves, which are over. You can see here, they're seed heads, and I'm waiting till their seed heads mature. You can see some of them are getting there down here at the bottom. Oh, look, that one I think is already open. Let's see. Yeah, you can see there's seeds. So what I can do with that is those seeds. See, evening primrose is biannual. I can drop their seeds, the foxglove seeds in there, and they will, I'll get that top bit, I will spread somewhere in the plantation. But evening prim primroses are a biannual, like foxgloves. No, can you please, don't want you to break my evening primroses. Oh, Janie Mac, are you okay? Good girl, yes, I know. The excitement of a job out in the field. Anyway, evening primroses are a biannual, so I want to plant these. With, that are blooming out there um, so that they can spread their seeds naturally. So like foxgloves, these foxgloves that are standing are only going to last this year. And then I spread their seeds. Oh, there's another one that's ripe. Um, so you can see when they're ripe, the seed head is cracked open. And if I do that, you can see the seeds coming out. So that's excellent. So I'll be spreading loads of seeds in that plantation as well. So that while the trees grow, the pollinators will have food. So I'll show you what's happening in this small plantation that I worked on over here. We'll come over here where the fleeces still haven't dried out. I might have to give up on my fleeces this year because every time they get nearly dry, it rains again and you can't pack them wet. Anyway, this is a plantation 
that I've worked on over the last four years. And you can see the trees are all growing really, really well. But I sowed in, if you remember, those of you who have followed me for a while will remember, I sowed some oxide daisies and evening primroses. You can see where the alpaca reached over and ate some of this uh, Gilda Rose. But look at all the pollinators. So while the trees are growing uh, and allow a lot of sun in, these pollinators can be here. Now, these evening primroses, I planted some in here three years ago. So these that are blooming are the offspring of the original ones. So that's why I'm going to be doing the same in the other plantation, is I'm planting a few species to begin with, and then they will take off while those trees mature. And then the trees will mature, shade them out, and I'll probably have another plantation somewhere else with daisies and trees growing. So it gives a real, real thick sense of biodiversity or a really, really thick habitat for biodiversity of plant and insect life. Mmm, this is mint. Look at that. babies how are you babies I know okay gate opening time Yep, that's gonna fit. Too deep. And there we go. Ooh, beautiful big worms. Look at that. Beautiful big worms. Go in there, do what you do best. There we go, the first premier rose. And I've got my observers, sorry, my helpers. You coming here to help. I'm gonna get some of the daisies and plant a few here as well. Isn't that right? Yes, as soon as I kneel down on the ground, you say, oh, I'm a lovely footstool to keep puppy's toes warm and dry. You're so sweet, yeah. Now I've gotta stand up and go and get the daisy box. Look at 
those beautiful daisies. Lots of them. Getting rid of some of the grass. That's not what I'm trying to encourage to grow here yet. Down the road, there can be grass, but at the moment, I don't want a huge amount of grass in here. So, because the grass can overpower the daisies in the early stages of the establishment. Okay. Now. You helping? You helping digging daisy holes? Inca is ever vigilant for insects that might be crawling around. So daisy one, daisy two, daisy three, daisy four, and a primrose. So I'm going to go and do more. Plant lots of these things. Very studious assistant overseeing what I'm doing. planting Carl. Here's Carl. His primrose. Now, let's see if I've dug the hole big enough. 
Perfect. Beautiful. Again, beautiful, big, big worms. all the bark mulch that we loaded in here earlier this year. So there's Carl <clears throat> and there's Carl's primrose. And there's the other primrose. Bear is sitting on top of the quad. Okay, some more daisies. Here you can see this is the fever few that I planted yesterday. Still not feeling very well. I might plant more, but hopefully the roots will take off. There's the oxide daisy from yesterday, and there's more oxide daisies from yesterday. So Carl, let me pick some wood chip out from your middle of your there we go so one more empty bucket and lots of thistles that I've been attacking because I just don't want it to become a monoculture of thistles so a lot of these thistles and nettles are going to come out so that we can have as broad a diversity of plant life in here as possible Ink is very studiously looking for uh, any insects. Anyway, these are the last few oxide daisies I've planted some babies. Hopefully they'll take off. Next to this Gilda Rose. You helping. You're not to step on those ones. Those are more oxide daisies. And of course himself has come. Yes. So... That's my planting for the day. You can see up there, those are the primroses I planted. And I demolished more thistles and nettles and dock over there. Isn't that right? Briefly showing you the before, and then I'm going to work on the after. But this trough, all these primulas I bought, I think I spent 10 euros and I got about 15 of those this spring. They were great. The only thing that survived from last year are these, um, what are they called? Uh, fire something or other. Uh, I can't remember what they're called. Anyway, I love them. They're lovely. Oh, and that tiny little pansy. So I'm going to take out all the primulas and I'm going to put in something new. I hope you guys like 
the transformation. Now, these are all the primroses dug out of that trough and I'm gonna plant them out under trees in plantations so they can grow on for next spring for early pollinating food. Well, it's done, but um, looks a little bit of battered and bruised at the moment because there's plants in here that were rescues. Like this was a rescue here. And this is from my garden anyway. There's some of this stuff is from the garden. This, um, oh, I'm being stupid. I know what this is so well. Anyway, that's a rescue. Um, there was other ones that are rescue. This is from the garden. Um, so we'll see how it goes. It's a mixture of rescues, stuff that I bought, and you just want your tail to get in the way, don't you? So that is the trough. And hopefully in the coming weeks it will flourish. And you can see there's already a bee that's already interested. Look, there you go. Already interested in, you're at the wrong end. Oh, I guess they're drinking the water that um, I poured on it. So I poured loads of water on it to get it going. Anyway, there we go. And I'll have to sweep up some of my mess as well. But uh, hopefully that will flesh out and mature and look fabby doozy. Inca's kind of interested in that bee, wherever the bee is. Oh, look, it's still there. I think it's drinking water. There's tons of water all over here. So that she's just drinking water here is fine. That doesn't matter. Oh no, she's drink she's now looking for pollen. Okay, that is my new trough. And may it mature beautifully. Oh, and Java's out and about. He was completely unnerved by the electric fence. But he's much better now. It's been a few hours.